13 Action News begins with breaking news. We are back with unrest in Las Vegas. We're now in our third night of protests. This is a live look at downtown Las Vegas where protesters have been gathered since as early as 5 o'clock this afternoon. They are demanding justice after the death of George Floyd at the hands of a Minneapolis police officer. Metro estimates between 1,500 and 2,000 protesters have been out tonight. Officers say several arrests have been made, but it's not clear how many. We're told what remained a peaceful protest for hours has turned violent. Protesters have vandalized cars, broken windows, and continue to throw objects, including Molotov cocktails. Officers say they were forced to deploy tear gas. Now you can see people breaking windows at the federal courthouse. We're going to bring up that video. This was about within the last hour or so. Um, we are, you can see someone breaking that window with a hammer, uh, people cheering, uh, and people still with their signs and taking video. That is again at the federal courthouse. Other people also broke into a pawn shop and started looting it. Now this is at Easy Pawn on Las Vegas Boulevard. In one of those videos, the first one, you can actually hear protesters yelling for those people to stop lootings, to stop breaking the windows, saying that they did not want this to turn violent. Now here in Las Vegas, we have live team coverage tonight. Austin Carter, Ross DiMatte, they are both standing by. But first, let's get started with Austin Carter tonight. Austin, what are you seeing right now? What has transpired in the last hour or so since we've been on air? Yeah, well, Jackie, it seems probably right after we got off air, probably about an hour ago, we were more so in the area of Container Park, uh, and we started hearing a lot of those flashbangs going off, and people really just dispersed that area. We then saw uh, some of those SWAT team members, Metro Police, completely just taking over that area and moving their efforts to get people out of downtown, down Fremont Street, towards the Fremont Street experience. Since then, we have just really been seeing a lot of chaos still happening here in the downtown area. Now, we are perched above here at 4th and Carson. Street. I'm going to have my photographer Stephanie push in here um, on this wall of Metro Police vehicles, uh, Metro Police officers as well. You can see all of them uh, suited up in that gear, a lot of that body armor as well. And we've been seeing police agencies out here from across the valley. You can see that white one right there appears to be a North Las Vegas police cruiser. Now, just to our left is the Easy Pond, um, also right here near the intersection of 4th and Carson. That's where we were seeing some videos on social media and some reports of vandalism happening over there um, and as far as what's on the ground well we are still hearing uh, flashbangs uh, we heard one I'd say about five minutes ago uh, just before we came to you live here on the on 13 action news at 11 uh, so we're seeing folks just still kind of trickling walking through this area um, but obviously police still taking this very seriously treating this as such uh, again you're looking at these officers here patrolling keeping these areas uh, blocked off to people as now we are seeing that reports of looting you know this did remain peaceful for the the majority of the evening and I think most of us were hoping and seeing that it was going peaceful even all through as they were uh, walking through uh, the different areas of downtown passing the courthouse CCDC then wrapping back uh, to uh, Container Park that's when we really started to see things just take this violent turn uh, Kalina Shrinos myself our photographers and, and our extra crew that has been with us to make sure that we are all safe definitely uh, experiencing and seeing all of that firsthand those water bottles being thrown here but now it seems like Metro Police, they just want to try to make sure uh, that they can get this as contained as possible as they can be. There are still some people here uh, below us on some of the sidewalks here, possibly uh, maybe heading home as well. So again, for the remainder of the evening, what it looks like, we're just going to continue to see one last look here um, as these officers continue to patrol these areas here in downtown. Now, some of the bigger streets here, like the one you see right here below us on Carson, uh, that remains open to vehicle traffic. We've been seeing a lot of people making their way um, in and out of this this area so it seems like there are certain areas they are blocking off especially in front of that easy pond there we where we did have that report of looting happening and so we're still hearing flashbangs off in the distance not exactly sure what direction that's coming from things kind of were a blur for all of us um, after the metro police started clearing out the area in front of container park uh, that's when we saw a lot of people you know running away teary-eyed um, you know possibly being hit by um, you know anything that the law enforcement agencies were using to get people to disperse 
dispersed from these areas. Uh, so we're going to stay out here, kind of try to monitor this as we can. But uh, police definitely holding uh, and standing strong here tonight, um, trying to make sure there is no more violence out here in downtown Las Vegas. Jackie, back to you. Yeah, Austin, thank you for kind of uh, giving us the, the scene there, showing off what's going on. Uh, Metro does say that 50 people were looting at that easy pond, so we did just get that number confirmed by Metro. Now we're taking a look from Chopper 13, and we do want to check in with Ross and Matei. And Ross, we were on air just an hour ago um, showing just how large the groups of protesters were, and it's a much different scene here at 1106. Yeah, Jackie, that has absolutely been the biggest difference since we went back to refuel for the second time now, and we're now up in the air over downtown Las Vegas for the third time tonight, and we spent a good 10, 15 minutes looking for that large protesting presence, and just weren't able to find it. The largest group that we've been able to find right now is the one you're looking at on your screen. This is a line of Metro Police officers. We believe that there uh, may be a, a SWAT team in there as well, but they have been standing uh, united side by side and moving east along Fremont Street and basically dispersing any protesters. In fact, we can tell you just moments ago, we watched as that line of Metro Police was confronted by one lone protester who was kind of uh, walking backwards, but still within five or 10 feet of this line of Metro officers. and. Uh, as soon as uh, they got close to, to that protester, they then charged in and uh, definitely detained that protester. And at that moment, that was when the police lights went dark and we couldn't really see exactly how it went down. But it was clear that they tackled this protester and, uh, and put them into custody. So that's just one of the scenes we're seeing here. But this line of Metro officers is moving efficiently east on Fremont Street and, and dispersing any protesters that are remaining along Fremont Street. Jackie? Yeah, Ross, thank you so much for that. And and we do want to check in with Kalina Strinos. We mentioned that Metro uh, say that they were forced to deploy some tear gas. We know that our crew, including you, Kalina, were actually uh, involved in that. You actually felt you were coughing. You said that it was painful. And I, I would love for you just to kind of describe that experience. What exactly happened? Yeah, we were um, at the Container Park area at the time. We were actually around the corner trying to um, reload an extra battery to make sure we had enough uh, battery power for our live shot. And right at that moment, we just saw a huge crowd running in our direction. We all kind of turned to see what was going on. And we were just a few yards away from where the tear gas was deployed. Um, you could just see people coughing. I've never heard coughing like that before in my life, uh, crying. Uh, it was extremely painful to say the least, but um, I wasn't close to the area at the time, so I didn't see why that uh, the tear gas was dispersed in the way that it was. We just saw the aftermath of everything, everyone kind of running, um, just feeling extremely uncomfortable. We all ended up turning a corner, sitting down, getting some water, rinsing out our eyes, blowing our noses, and just trying to flush everything out as much as we could. And you could see other protesters helping each other in the same exact way. We moved our location, though. There was actually another um, tear gas incident over on Bridger. Um, now we are at 6th and Fremont here and we were following officers. I'm not quite sure if you can see that, but down in that area we saw SWAT um, officers here. We also have Metro who are still here as well and we've been following them from down the street, from down 6th Street. They've been moving protesters along this area. Um, I want to say shooting some type of rubber bullet, um, into the crowd. I'm not quite sure when that additional tear gas was dispersed at the time, but now they've moved down in this direction with the SWAT team, with the additional officers, and continue to push some of the protesters out in that direction. Um, when you're walking and heading through this area, you'll just see all the water bottles that we saw thrown in the air at pre the previous location. You can see it kind of scattered across the ground here. There's graffiti across El Cortez uh, Theater right across from us right now, uh, BL Black Lives Matter. Of course, this is all in response to the death of George Floyd out of Minneapolis. So um, this is going to continue to be a fluid situation. Um, where we are, it is extremely quiet, but um, I know in some other areas um, it hasn't been the case. But for now, what I've seen from Container Park, aside from the tear gas incident um, and some of the water bottle throwing, a lot of the protesters were just encouraging each other to keep everything peaceful and keep everything calm, that they really just really wanted to make sure that their voices were heard tonight.
That's very, uh, it's interesting to see what your photographer was just showing there. Uh, trash cans turned over. We see tags, graffiti on the walls around you. Uh, we did show the video uh, moments ago, uh, an intense uh, scuffle between um, protesters and police. We're going to show that one more time. And this is, Kalina, where you said that that tear gas was deployed. Um, and you can see how sort of intense that moment was. Um, and I just want to ask you, Kalina, are you, are you doing okay now? I mean, you said that you did have to kind of rinse out your eyes and, and that you were coughing a lot. But are you doing okay now an hour after this happened? Yeah, you know, um, it still kind of burns. I know we have uh, other people in our crew. It was this, the same exact reaction. So for us to be not right where the tear gas was deployed to feel the way we were feeling and have that effect, I can't even imagine what it was like for people who were right where the tear gas was uh, was at. So um, it definitely was not um, a pleasant experience to say the least. However, we're all doing okay right now. I do want to mention, I actually spoke to a woman earlier today, um, one of the few people that wanted to talk to us um, who mentioned that she has an eight-year-old son who she came out to the protest for. He wasn't with her but she said the reason why she was here was for him. So if we have that sound bite, I'd love to uh, listen in. It's, it's really hard to try and explain to an eight-year-old where they can really understand in layman terms, but I tried to explain, um, you know, that all cops aren't bad, you know, because he is, I don't want my son to be to fear police, you know, you know, because situations like this, but I just reassure him if he does, you know, stay away from stuff that, you know, it's kind of hard, you know, to tell a child to stay away from certain things because a child is a child and, you know, I just hopefully he'll get through this. So, yeah, so you heard from that woman who, again, has the eight year old son who was out here for him saying what happened to George Floyd was not OK. She's not OK with it and she doesn't want to have her son have to experience something like that, but also teaching him that not all officers are bad. And um, that's something that we've heard from other people here uh, protesting as well. So we're going to keep an eye on this. We're going to kind of walk down in that direction to where the SWAT officers are and the police officers are to see what might be going on there. But again, where we are, this is right across from El Cortez. Um, off of 6th Street. Everything is pretty quiet here in this area. Helena, I'm so glad that you are safe tonight, that you are doing okay. Thank you so much for bringing us, uh, continuing to bring us this coverage of a very important uh, night in Las Vegas. Right now, we're going to